Thank you for joining us this week on The Tongue with Dr. Mike. I'm so glad you're here with us again. Make sure you're visiting our website, thetonguespeakslife.com. Uh, that's where you go to access all of our podcasts. Uh, you'll be able to check out, you know, what's going on and our other projects. I want you to go to Facebook as well. Get, get over into the group in my father's house. Uh, get in there, join the conversation, get the encouragement from everybody, get updates and, and indications on what shows are coming up, who the interviews uh, will be, the guests on the show. Uh, that's a great place to find everything in one center. Pillars of Heaven with JB and Leah is there. Prayer Cast is there. Make sure you're going on that in Facebook. Go join In My Father's House and check out www.thetonguespeakslife.com. That's where you're going to go and find podcasts from The Tongue with Dr. Mike. You're going to find uh, Pillars of Heaven podcast on there. You can check out on the page there. The Cure International link is there. If you haven't gone to Cure International and checked that out yet, man, you, you're missing out. You need to go and check that out. You can donate right on the page there. That money goes directly to Cure International. They are changing lives of children every day. Those surgeries, I want you to check that out. If you've never heard of that, go to Cure uh, International or go right to thetonguespeakslife.com and check out Cure there. You donate right to them. You can donate to the, the Tongue with Dr. Mike if you want to. Uh, anything that is taken in on that site goes straight into all of the projects that help us keep going in, our, in my father's house, Pillars of Heaven, all of that. So it's all connected there with the thetonguespeakslife.com. Make sure you're going there. And, and as our family, keeps growing and growing I, I do want to say welcome back to everybody listening across the world um, man god bless you wherever you are special thank you this week to apostle simon of bushfire church i uh, thank you for your prayers this week uh, man what a wide program uh, and we're reaching further and farther than we ever could imagine right praise god so today's topic we're going to jump into being a leader right so this is a little bit of an in-depth uh message it's going to take a little bit longer but it's super important i mean being a leader takes so many different forms and different looks uh, there's so many different type of leaders you know we're going to go over some attributes of great leaders you know some of the differences but then we're going to jump into the bible and see what's spoken about you know leaders in the body of christ um there's so many there's so much that goes into becoming a good leader uh, it's something that most of us strive towards it doesn't come easy right you have to work hard at it just like anything you got to work hard there's so many great seminars and books about leadership uh, you know a lot from the corporate perspective you can read them and, and those can be helpful but but how do you become a good biblical leader you know the bible presents us with with a ton of verses uh, that you can study and then that gives us a glimpse of how you become a better leader inside the church right so there's a couple things to keep in mind when you're going through this right number one is leaders are most importantly servants first right Matthew 20 says but among you it will be different whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant you know Jesus taught his disciples not to emulate the rulers of the Gentiles who exercised you know authority over them he wanted he, he taught in order for us you know for for us to be leaders we must become servants first right you know you can't conform to the status quo especially if it entails ruling through coercion or unjust deeds you know over your subordinates fairness is a leader's moral obligation right uh, proverbs 29 14 says if a judge if a king judges the poor with truth his throne will be established forever a leader's credibility is based on how he upholds truth and fairness uh, over whoever he's, a, you know, whatever organization it is, whatever. That verse in Proverbs teaches us that, you know, honest and truthful leaders are appreciated and their legacy will be known long after their reign is over. Leaders see strength in their followers. Philippians 2.3 says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than, your, uh, uh, better than yourself. Sorry. Leaders are humble and they don't boast. Uh, that's where that's it. They're also very encouraging of others. They they don't belittle their followers um, just because of their lack of capacity on something. They see potential in the uniqueness of all of their followers. Right? Great leaders are tactful. Proverbs twenty nine continues on. A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. 
Very important. Great leaders know when to open their mouths, but they know when to shut their mouth too. They know when to argue and whom to argue with. That's important. Not knowing when to, but knowing who to, right? They realize no good will come from, you know, engaging in heated arguments with people. Uh, you, you know, you instead express yourselves calmly and thoughtfully. Good leaders are willing to take advice, right? When leaders are ready and open to take advice, their ideas become limitless. You know, you can think of innovative ways to improve, you know, but you're getting outside help. So that improving comes from not just improving direct things underneath you themselves, but the company in general, right? Proverbs 11 says, when there's no guidance, the people fall, but in abundance of counselors, there is victory. There's wisdom in that. There's tons of wisdom in that, right? Leaders uplift others and they hear what their wishes are, right? Leaders do not look down on people and they don't think highly of themselves. They prioritize the interest of all the majority and, and, Oh, let's jump in. Philippians 2, 3, and 4 says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Right? Tons could be said about that. You know, great leaders delegate. A lot of people struggle with this one. I struggle with it sometimes, you know, because I am a hands-on approach and I know that I can count on me and I know if I do it, it'll get done correctly, you know, depending on what the circumstance is. And I have a lot of trouble letting go of those reins and trusting somebody else, right? Uh, Matthew 24 says, a faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. And there is so much wisdom in, in that. A good leader can tell when a person has potential to lead others or not. Plain and simple. He delegates, he delegates you know, better than, than I do, for sure, but he rewards objectively based on their performance as well. And, and that's... A quality that you really need in people that you delegate things to uh, and honesty is another one honesty you know honest leaders are rewarded the most uh, plain and simple you know today's world dishonesty is, is so common among people you know whether it be political positions uh, whatever a good leader stands out because he upholds a higher standard he knows the consequences to his character of being either unfair or dishonest and he's rewarded immensely for doing the right thing right you look back in the old testament in exodus uh, but select capable men from all the people men who fear god trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain appoint them as officials over thousands hundreds fifties and tens you know it's it's something that a great responsibility was given to these great leaders but to be a leader you have to be trainable as well right leaders are open-minded they don't resist they're, they're not resistant to being trained even if it means being taught by somebody lower in their position right luke twenty two twenty six says but it is not this way with you but the one who is greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like the servant it's important if you're a leader that you take pride in your work because everybody's watching you right no matter how difficult or, or how easy the task is for you Good leaders do the best they can to ensure that the quality uh, that they're looking for is achieved, right? Ecclesiastes says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going, right? So use everything that you can now. Leaders don't just act blindly. They, they perform based on the scope of their responsibility. And more often than not, than not, they realize how big a role they have in that organization, right? And it's just like Luke says, you know, from everyone who has been given much shall much be required. You know, leadership, yeah, leaders must know the scope of their responsibility, plain and simple. You know, leaders are, are also people you can look towards and you know that they have, uh, you know, a quote unquote word of honor, 
right? You know, and Matthew talks about it, you know, Matthew 5 says, simply let your yes be yes and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. So your, your word or your word of honor equates to fairness when, when you're leading people. You know, good leaders know the impact of the decisions they make so that when it comes to decision makings, they have to think hard and they have to be firm, right? Leaders have exceptional qualities that others aim to have. They're looking, these people are looking at that in you, right? So it, it's leaders will inspire followers to be like them. Uh, so in that, you have to possess certain qualities that will make these others stand out from the crowd, their charisma, their confidence, their self-control. That all has to be evident in you. Right. First Timothy, Timothy says, therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. Right. And like with anything else, you know, there's experience and there's knowledge and wisdom and and, and age is a requirement for you to properly be a great leader. There are natural leaders that are younger the very true and there's some aspiring leaders um they can be discriminated discriminated because simply adjust to their age you know you know age is only a number yeah we all hear that it, it, it's applicable in leadership just because someone is young and looks inexperienced does not mean he's not a good leader but age is um something that you look at as a whole and you look as an older leader you look towards their uh, not just theory you're looking to their real experience but it doesn't have to be that way a good leader uh it, age is irrelevant when it comes to good leadership and that's in the bible first timothy 4 says let no one despise you for your youth but set the believers an example in speech in conduct in love in faith in purity if you're doing that it doesn't matter how old you are right because good leaders are are careful of their actions leaders are very wary of their actions they they know that they influence people their positive actions are contagious right but so are their negative ones so if leaders act with integrity then their subordinates will follow and, and the same with the other way around right you know good leaders are careful to their actions treat others the same way you want them to treat you that's from Luke 6:31 right Leaders are patient with everyone, regardless of their capabilities. You know, you have to worry about, especially in corporate setting, uh, you know, the backstabbing, the uh, gossip, you, you know, everything that's common in workplaces, right? If leaders allow that practice, you know, such practices like uh, listening and taking part, uh, that strengthens a negative culture, right? You want to break away from that. Leaders are passionate about lifting people up, especially inside their organization, right? They realize the importance of getting everyone on board with, to get the same vision, and then everybody works together to achieve the same goal, right? It's that simple. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all, First Thessalonians, right? So what else makes a good leader? So in Psalm 78, it says, so he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them with his skillful hands, right? So leaders technically are masters of their trade. They know the ins and outs of any business that they're associated with, right? They perform their responsibilities passionately because they have, you know, spent their whole time in the trenches learning how to do it and perfect it. You know, most leaders are admired and they're imitated. You know, they leave a lasting mark with, with you know, each person, that mark is different. But that mark, it's a lasting mark that people remember. Good leaders are celebrated, they're imitated, and bad leaders are remembered just by the pain they cause. Everyone can remember a terrible boss or a terrible person that had no business in a leadership position that you had to listen to, you know. And those are the ones that stick out the most. But, you know, leaders are careful about what they say, right? And that comes from Proverbs too. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Leaders are very effective communicators, but they know that words can either make or break people. So they have to think carefully before they speak, right? And they have to be more than willing to lead. They can't just be uh, a leader's willing, you know, to do great things, but leaders who are willing to take the added responsibility have the most potential to grow, 
right? And, and it's super important because you're dealing with a, a person that you're looking towards as a leader usually leads with passion, right? Passion drives people to do imaginative and, and most often inventive things, right? Passionate leaders tend to perform better because they realize the impact that it has in moving people and moving the business forward, right? As you motivate these people, you start to achieve your goals, right? Uh, but lead, lead with passion. You know, Romans talks about the one who exhorts in his, in his exhortation, um, exhortation, sorry, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. These are great leaders, you know, obey your leaders and submit to them for they keep watch over your souls as those who give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, uh, for this would be unprofitable for you, right? So leaders are respected if they respect others. You've heard that, you know, uh, respect is earned, you know, everyone yearns for respect, but most often, you know, it, it's not earned. Yeah, everybody wants it. If a leader knows how to show respect to their employees, you know, by not looking so arrogant in their endeavors and by, you know, genuinely caring for them, then they can be respected and they'll be remembered for a very long time, right? When, when there's a common goal uh, that both leaders and followers can get together around, one goal when everyone's on the same page, all, only good things will follow. A leader's purpose, pur purpose is just to do that. It's to unify everybody under them and, and so you can achieve those goals, right? And Psalm says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And, you know, unity is a common goal. Both leaders and your followers, you have to have, you have to share that, you know. Leaders reciprocate good deeds, Leaders know how and when to use rewards. When they spot an employee performing well, they don't have a second thought about rewarding them because it's, you know, whether it's promotion, incentive, whatever. They are very quick to recognize great work and to reward it, right? Matthew says, so whatever you wish with others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. It's the same thing, you know? And we already talked about choosing your battles, you know, but let's jump back to Proverbs. It says, do not speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. Wise leaders do not just engage in meaningless arguments or, or with people who don't listen. They pick their fights, and when they do, they usually come out on top, right? Leaders look after their subordinates. It's very important. True leaders take care to look after their followers. They're humble enough to reach out to the concerns of other people. Leaders also act with integrity you know a lot of these are you know you you think when you think about a good leader this is common stuff you know leaders who follow what is right and they're they're rewarded and they're uplifted right when when leaders act with integrity they're known for sticking to what they believe in and that helps building you know a respectable reputation and your re reputation is everything especially with a leader especially with a leader with integrity right? They're strong and they're unfazed in the face of adversary and, and challenge. You know, they don't worry because they know what everyone's capable of doing, right? But to be that leader, you also have to learn from the example of others. Leading by example is one thing, but learning from the example of others is another, right? Leaders aren't perfect and they shouldn't claim to be. They must, you know, learn from other people as well. And, and, you know, they, they need to hold themselves to the highest standard. It, it might be difficult for those leaders to always do the right thing, but it's imperative that they do, a, you know, for the lot, a lot of people are looking up to you, right? So even if it's difficult to do the right thing, you must do the right thing. Leaders, that you have to hold yourself as a leader to the highest standard, right? Ecclesiastes 10 says, blessed are you, O land, whose king is of no and whose princes eat at the appropriate time for strength and not for drunkenness. Leaders tend to be fearless, right? Uh, great leaders know what they're capable of doing. And when they do, uh, they believe they're able to conquer whatever challenge they face. They speak in, in a general tone and they're encouraging and they, they, they cause something inside of you to, to rise up. Right. But it's important that they seek spiritual counsel as well. You know, you can't just rely on yourself. Uh, you need to be faithful. And you need to realize the power of a higher being that, that that will keep your feet grounded. 
right? And James 1 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you right you need that you need that wisdom you know leaders are judged with with strictness um when someone's in a position people always try to find something wrong with their actions you know you have to be as a leader be prepared to face criticism uh you know especially of your character and of all of your actions you know for sure um you know, but then when you find that great leader, you need to celebrate that that great leader, right? People are satisfied when they're led by a fair and just leader, but you know, in contrary, people complain when their leaders are unjust, right? And it's you know that's from Proverbs. When the righteous increase, the people rejoice, but when a wicked man rules, people groan. You know, simple knowledge. Leaders are a ton of things. Leaders are thankful. Leaders are hopeful. You know, leaders don't give up. They anticipate positive results, you know, and they're able to troubleshoot when things don't go exactly as planned. The important thing is that, uh, and we could talk about, and somebody asked me the other day about bribery and, um, you know, leaders that accept bribes and act dishonestly to gain status or money and power. And, um, you know, all those people ultimately lose. And that's all I'm going to say about that is, you know, uh, doing something that uh, derails any any of your organization or, or takes you off of your plan to achieve that goal and, and you're reaching that goal dishonestly, uh, nothing good is going to come from that. Um, man, it, it's just terrible. You know, leaders uh, would not be where they are if, if in the process they didn't learn from feedback. You need feedback. You know, correction is part of good leadership. And I'm, I'm very difficult to take criticism. I don't do it well. But accepting criticism leads to growth. And, you know, they're not bothered at all when you call them out for something, if you're a good leader. Uh, I, I take criticism with a grain of salt. Um, you know, it's important that you, when, when you're taking criticism or you're taking advice, you know, I, I've been instructed along my journey is, you know, never take advice from somebody that's not in a position where you would want to be. There's some truth in that. Um, there's some also truth in, you know, God's going to use other people to give you what you need at your time. doesn't matter who they are. Um, you know, in a financial word, in a uh, financial setting, in a, in a corporate setting, those people that you decide to take your advice from, uh, most likely they're very successful in their roles where they are. And that's who you're looking for guidance, right? But uh, leaders will concern themselves with the well-being of their subordinates. And, and, and that's what you need to know. It's not just who you're looking to follow. is that they truly care about you and want to bring you up and, and to check you and to groom you, right? Because leaders accept challenges, that's what they do. Leaders accept every challenge that's given to them. They don't just let their subordinates do their job. They're generally concerned about their well-being, right? They, they always check on their employees to make sure they're doing the work, but they're also giving advice. And, and when they're challenged, when, when somebody comes back and you're trying to give somebody advice and they challenge you, good leaders don't falter. They face hurdles and, and you know, they, they don't get disheartened if something doesn't go their way. They teach people about how to be social. They teach people how you can't live in isolation. You need to seek the help of other people. Leaders know the value of other people's opinions. Leaders let the spirit do the work, right? Leaders who take it slow and let their faith do the work are better than those who don't. Sometimes things happen that are outside of your control, right? When that happens, leaders know there's sometimes more benefit to waiting it out and giving up control for the time being, right? Proverbs 16 said, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. That's that same thing we talked about before and being slow to anger, right? It's all wrapped up together. Leaders look up to those who led before them. Right, First Timothy 5 says, Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. So what's that mean? That means the past leaders deserve to be regarded highly for you know the wisdom they possess and the what they've learned through experience. Great leaders realize uh, what they've gone through and they look up to those people. 
So you know that they've led by example. You know that in order to lead and inspire towards the same goal, leaders practice that same thing. They have to be self-controlled uh, so that their followers will be too. They have to embody the attributes they hope that their followers will emulate. They also are not above uh, being human. You know, they need prayer too. They need, they're human. You know, they fall prey to the world's sinful practices just like everybody else. They, they need guidance and prayers of all their followers that they continue to work with integrity. And, you know, First Timothy talks about that, too. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all of those in authority, you know, that we may live peacefully and, and, and quiet lives in all good, goodliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. You could be a strong and powerful leader, but it, it's, it's good to be humble like Moses was, right? And, and number says, now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Do you have to be that humble? No, you know, but Moses was a humble man. And because of that humility, he did marvelous work. Leaders do very well when they exercise humility and, and they follow Moses as an example. But you have to not take man everyone you start to rise up everyone's gonna take a shot at you that's the way it is you know but it's important that you don't take everything to heart proverbs says above all guide your heart for everything you do flows from it you know leaders are careful about uh what they harbor in their hearts it's that simple if they only take in positivity their lives will be positive right garbage in garbage out it's the same same core value right but but leaders you need to carefully consider your values right for you know matthew says for where your treasure is there your heart will be also that talks about earthly treasure of treasure versus heavenly treasure but you know great leaders don't see everything with a price tag they they consider things like commitment trust hard work you know those are things that have high value to them leaders are are always generous uh, you know if there's a chance for leaders to reward their employees they do it willingly and we talked about that briefly but they know the value of their followers you know and and, and they reward hard work and commitment proverbs again do not withhold good from those to whom it's due when it's in your power of your hand to do so do it Whatever is worthwhile to, to do, work hard at it. Leaders are rewarded for their commitment to their goals, right? They invest in their skills. You know, they're not satisfied with, with what they know, but they're constantly looking for ways to improve themselves through training, through education. You lead with integrity and you gain respect. And we talked about that. People who live with integrity are faultless, right? Leaders who lead with integrity act based on what they know is right. And because they do, they're respected more. I won't say that they're incorruptible because, you know, everybody at some point <laughs> gets tempted. Um, but, you know, leaders work hard towards their goal. And that's what you need to understand. Le leaders do what they say. They, they aim to achieve their mission by doing right they're laser focused and they don't deviate from that objective leaders serve you know it's not just for themselves that people i mean sometimes you're thrown into that leadership position and sometimes you you strive for that position but other times you know it's it's thrust upon you you know what i mean but as a leader as long as you're looking for the good of of many um most leaders are able to discern what's best for everybody that they are, they're in charge of, right? They're not easily bribed. They're persuaded, you know, by the benefit of a few over the benefit of the majority, you know, and that's what they need to do. And, and if you're unjust and you're taking that bribe, you're not, you're not going to succeed. We, we talked about that. Leaders who are just on, uh, you know, when they're unjust, they bring nothing but failure to the organization. And in the end, you know, they achieve, they often achieve nothing, and it does nothing but cause division among everybody that you are in charge of. It's important that you yourself stand up as a man of integrity or a woman of integrity or a leader of integrity, you know, but not just for yourself. Speak up for others. Great leaders are always by the side of those who need them, especially for those who cannot fight for themselves. They're unbiased and they fight against injustice, period. Proverbs 31 says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. You know, you do all that stuff and you'll see yourself rise and grow 
further and go farther and you get promoted those leaders that do make a mark you know uh or the ones that have the ability to achieve their goals and they go above and beyond what's required of them you know you strive so that you get that respect and you get that esteem and you don't stop until you know you don't stop doing what's right to get there right you don't deviate from your goal you have your eyes fixed on doing what's right and just and that's what you do but if you do slip and fall you quickly recover from defeat when you fail you do not harbor that grief right stand back stand up charge the failure to experience and you learn from it and you move on leadership without a goal is leading blindly you have to put that goal there so especially if you've taken a fall back set that next goal very attainable and go leaders who have no idea what they're doing or where they're leading their employees fail period leaders are focused on a clear path to achieve that goal so if that if that goal is too far or if it's too long change the goal right make it more attainable you you are you know taking ownership of your responsibility and your positive and negative outcomes is key to be an effective leader you, you should be able to take responsibility for your team's work as well as yourself uh, you know that could involve apologizing for mistakes and developing new systems and processing uh, all different new ideas and avenues to get things done to avoid errors in the future but you have to take accountability right you have to actively listen to who's in your team successful leaders uh you know they should not only be able to give but also they should be able to receive that feedback uh and listen right you have to actively listen to uh the words being spoken but you have to understand the meaning behind them you can practice you can practice you know listening by minimizing distractions around you when you're having those conversations but you show interest and, and use those nonverbal cues and, and you know summarize the speaker's words to show that you understand so repeat it back to them when they're giving you your feedback sum it up and send it back to them and say so this is where i need to do that yes this is where this is what you're saying this is what you've noticed about me yes above all else you need courage right yeah, it's just like everything in life. Effective leaders, they need to have the courage to do what's in the best interest of the team at all times. There may be times when you need to make an unpopular or difficult decision. So you have to have courage and you have to accept the difficulty of that role and make the necessary decision with confidence. You stand up and you make that decision. You need to take courage and pursue new challenges. You know, show courage by accepting more responsibility or, or, or push yourself to gain new skills. It doesn't matter. But your communication has to be effective. You have to be able to articulate and you have to be able to use a positive style that creates a clear path for the rest of the team. You have to have good communication skills, uh, which includes listening effectively, right? When you communicate well with your team, it helps them better understand and it helps your expectations and goals be made known. Additionally, your team members may feel more comfortable expressing their interests and their concerns to you, right? Have empathy, have flexibility, have focus, set a, pr a practical vision with a suitable, achievable targets, right? Uh, everyone's heard, if you've been to college, you've heard of SMART goals, right? S-M-A-R-T goals. They're specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. SMART, right? It's the acronym. But use that as a, a goal framework. To, you can establish a strong foundation for achieving success with that. But you have to have a growth mindset. You have to adopt a growth mindset. You have to have, you know, circumstances are going to change on you, and you need to consider that those changes or personal issues arise and you have to keep a growth mindset adapt and, and you have to overcome that challenge right you have to be eager to learn you have to be innovative you have to be optimist you have to be you have to have that passion where you can motivate your teams by demonstrating that passion in the workforce you have to you know be passionate about workplace goals create unity uh, you have to believe in the value of your work and you have to show that you care for the work you do uh, and that can motivate and that can inspire and, and that can get people to engage right you have to have patience you have to have uh problem solving you know that's that's uh, leadership 101 you, you have to be able to solve problems right but you have to have patience patience involves understanding mistakes 
mistakes do happen right accept the mistakes you know when they happen and focus on how to stay productive right don't don't dwell on that uh, work on ways to eliminate that in the future that's how you help employees get new roles and responsibilities you know and, and you develop your problem solving you know you use critical thinking skills to resolve them and that builds more leadership qualities in you you know, it makes training a priority for your employees. Help them develop more uh, uh, skills and abilities, right? But you have to have respect. And it all is back where affected leaders treat their team with respect. You know, I've worked for so many people that, man, they just worked you and worked you and worked you until you had nothing less to, left to give. And then they cut you loose, right? When you physically couldn't do it anymore or you were emotionally beat and they're working you and when you thought you couldn't work any harder, they push you harder and harder. Sometimes you were being motivated and pushed to see, you know, which ones would fall by the wayside and which ones would rise up. Other times you had a terrible leader, you know, and they ruined you. It, it happens. You get terrible leaders and they're doing it for no other reason than they like to see you suffer. Respect the people that you have underneath you. Respect your teams. Respect to help them gain, res gain respect. You know, they value your feedback and they want to hear the opinions of all the teammates as well. Right. Effective leaders show, you know, that they have respect by empowering their employees to make decisions and, and to use their expertise to achieve goals. When I took a job and I was in charge of re TV repair for a great retail company, I was in charge of repairing all the TVs in their homes in people's homes. I'm not an electrician. I don't know anything about TVs, but I know people. Right. So we became very successful because I didn't try to tell them how to do their job. I listened to my team that knew how to do the job. And together we came up with plans and, and attacked our problems. Right. And so I didn't need to be a, a TV technician. Right. I just needed to be a people person, a, a people technician of people who fix TVs. And that's what I did. You have to be transparent. You have to be trustworthy. Not only do you have to be trustworthy, you have to trust your team. You know, just like a marriage, you, if there's no trust, there's nothing, right? But showing trust in your team can improve not only employee morale, but motivation, right? When you allow your team members to work, you know, by themselves or make their own decisions and apply their skills and knowledge in the workplace, man, do they feel more valued than ever, right? And, and for their professional expertise, Show trust in your team, involve them in decision making, and, and when possible, empower them to make choices in their roles. Invite them to make, you know, reasonable expectations for their roles, set their own goals, create processes that guide their efforts. Man, there, there's so much you can do to help build people up, right? You have to realize there's different types of leaders. Right. There's three main styles of leadership, and, and I'm going to touch on them very briefly. Uh, there's autocratic, there's democratic, and there's laissez-faire leadership. One's a hands-on approach. One's a way-off hands-on approach. And, uh, you know, one of them focuses mainly on, on authority. Right. There, there's less focus on group participation. It's just you're doing it this way, and that's it, you know, um, and, and that's it. You know, the democratic ones are about team participation. You know, that, that's where you encourage uh, exchange of ideas and opinions within the team. And people, you know, you rely on team members' contributions to lead the team to success, right? Creativity thrives with that one. You know, and then there's this, lazy, you know, the, this hands-off where, where, you know, you just give assignments and general direction, directions, but you just rely on, on team members to motivate themselves, figure out how to fix it. And, you know, th there's no one right model, you know, and there's no one most effective leadership style because not every leader does just one of these styles. It's a mixture of all these styles that help, you know, determine who the successful leaders are going to be my job as a leader when i took the role in corporate america to my job was to find out what motivated my employees it was i'm not going to tell you how to do your job i'm going to expect you to do your job um man i'm going to help you do your job better but i'm not going to tell you how to do it you're going to do it and you're going to grow and i'm going to push you to grow and you're going to grow but if i can't i can only do so much for them right and leaders you need to hear this you can only do so much for people to help them if they 
don't want to get better, they won't. They have to want to get better. They have to want to succeed. They have to want to contribute. They have to want to participate or you're just going to be pulling them along the whole way. And at some point, it's time to cut the anchor. So what is the most effective leadership style? Be confident. Drive and motivate. Inspire. Be resilient. Make critical thinking skills and strategic planning your number one. Have great communication skills. Communicate relentlessly. Simplify and be direct. Listen and encourage. You know, illustrate through stories. Affirm with actions. Be self-aware. Be honest. Ha- have a vision and, and give them a big picture thinking. You know, you know, have a, a be be willing to delegate. Be creative. Be open mind. Have integrity. Be dependable and and, and be accountable and. Demand that from your, your, your staff, right? Be patient, have empathy, make sure there's a desire to learn and there's an ongoing development. Be flexible and be open to change. Be positive and have a great attitude. This list, I mean, there's so much I can say about becoming a leader. Um, there's so much that I can say about mentorship or, or learning through peer observation or courses and classes you could take or leadership books you could take or, you know, going on to getting feedback from others to help you grow internally you know true leaders are constantly asking for feedback and they take that information to heart it's important to be able to admit where you're weak in some area right and where you need to make improvements because nobody's perfect and believe it or not you have faults and other people are going to point them out to you and you better be receptive to what they say or things are never going to change you become better as you help others become better and other people will tell you hey If you do it this way, or if you could try this way, that'll help me be better. And that's what you need to, to, to focus on when you're seeking feedback. Um, there's so many things that can either make a 180 change or a 360 change, right? Or a 90 degree change or a 45 degree change. You know, you want to be able to be on that continued path of leadership development. And as we jump into the Bible here for, uh, a a quick quick bit when we go back to uh being in the church when it when it talks about because somebody asked me about uh qualifications for overseers deacons stuff like that right first timothy 3 1 through 7 says here is a trustworthy saying whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task now the overseer is to be above reproach faithful to his wife temperate, self-control, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may Uh, become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Man, there's a a big warning there, but there's some guidelines there about people in great higher positions in the the body of Christ, right? Inside the church. So obviously, and and we talked about what makes some of these great leaders are, are right there, man. It's not a lover of money and, you know, he, he must not be a recent convert. And that just goes to experience, right? And wisdom and, and yeah, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, hospitable, not given to drunkenness, uh, not quarrelsome. We just talked about what makes a great leader, all those things. Another uh, verse I want you to deal, this talks about dealing with false teachers. And I included it in here because it's important that you read that. And I challenge you, it's 2 Timothy chapter 2, Start at verse 14 and go right to the end. We'll go to verse 27, right? Because there it talks about God's people. Uh, It warns them against quarreling about words, right? When when it's of no value. And, you know, I want you to read that. Um, It gives you some warning in there. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, righteousness, faith, love, peace. Uh, You know, I want you to read that. Titus 
chapter one also talks about appointed elders who love what is good, right? An elder must be blameless, faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe and, and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Right? Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given the drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Uh, bingo, there's a whole bunch of them that we just talked about, right? Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who's self-controlled, who's upright, who's holy, who's disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy me message as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. There it is. Uh, the Bible is filled with uh, tons of examples about leadership. I've given you a couple qualifications and uh S some identifiers of good leaders and bad believe me across your lifetime you're going to run into both you're not going to have just a a straight run of great leaders in your life there's going to be some ones that throw a curve at you right here's some verses write these down isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 through 9 that's the branch from jesse i want you to read about that right the kingdom of righteousness isaiah 32 verses 1 through 8 okay these are all guidelines and and man these are these are great great to be in here too but you know as we're going a little bit long here i want to make sure that you realize that leadership is is man it, it's not an easy thing to be a leader you know and there's a lot of scrutiny that surrounds being a leader and much is required of those who are going to be a leader Right, but there's some things that you need to do, and there's some things that you need to have um, that you need to improve over time, and you know that will help you cover uh, yourself to grow as a leader, you know, and, and grow your confidence, grow grow your drive, grow your motivation. You have to have drive, you know. That's a you know drive is a willingness to push forward and hit the finish line. Sometimes uh, you need to self self motivate yourself because there aren't you know many people that are going to push you forward but you have to have that ambition and that motivation to continue to push even when nobody else is there doing it for you you have to push yourself and you need to be able to inspire those same feelings in others like i said it, it's not easy yeah there'll be plenty of stressful situations that, that come along and put you in in the driver's seat where you're operating under pressure right you have to be resilient uh, that, that can help you power through even though you know you're going through the toughest times that you have to still maintain composure you know often those struggles are, those struggles are what help you grow not just as a you know as a person but as a leader you've been through tough times and, and you've survived already you know you have the you you already have that ability to perform under pressure you know you roll your sleeves up and, and you know when things get dirty or tough and that's it there you are in it staying positive you're in a high pressure situation yeah that's a sign of a great leader it, it actually helps calm the people around you you know and everyone puts their focus on uh the solution instead of the problem when somebody stands up and takes control and starts to lead everybody man does that feel good right when you can look to somebody and they have the answers for you that being said, make sure your communication skills are good. It's important to listen to each conversation, you, you know, listen to that conversation in two flow way, right? Actively listen, you know, uh, make sure you're hearing and understanding. That's going to save you so much time and headaches, you know, if you guys are on the same page. Plus, if you're listening to, you know, your, your team members, your employees, they're going to help you be aware of some of the issues you're facing that, you know, you might not even have identified right it's important that you listen to your team especially the people on the front lines yeah that's you know take away your focus on promoting yourself right don't worry about yourself make sure about you know your reputation will grow you know once you're a leader you work to promote others you know you're only as strong as your weakest player how many people have heard that you're only as strong as the weakest link right so you you need to actively work and people will notice your skills and, and you won't have to point them out be honest like i said have the big picture be willing to delegate delegate be creative be open-minded have integrity be dependable be accountable these are all great things that you know develop a great leader make sure you're positive keep that great attitude you know 
Um, we talked about so many things as resources you could do books and seminars now with the web you can go online and type in leadership what makes you know what makes me a better leader than somebody else and you'll have 700 different up. ideas i just want to remind everybody that you know, like as always uh we give an open call to uh father god you know thank you for for loving us so much that you sent your, your son to die for us and, and because of him we have a direct path, you know, to God the Father, and it's so easy to find God. And I had a conversation with somebody this week who, unfortunately, you know, they they, they felt like whatever they've done in life was uh, too bad, and they feel that God won't forgive them. And let, let me tell you that there's nothing out there that God can't forgive you for, right? Just remember that. God's waiting to hear from you. The Word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. And that's the message concerning the faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. It's with your heart that you believe and are justified and it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved, right? Anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, right? The same Lord of all who richly blesses all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Right, Father God, thank you so much for the brothers and sisters around the world that are listening to this message. And thank you for the leaders that have emerged and that are emerging now and actually becoming great in my life as well. And, and thank you for the encouragement. And thank you for the uplifting. And thank you for the prayers. And I pray for anybody out there that's a leader, whether they wanted to be a leader or they're, it got thrown onto them. Father, bless them with patience and with um, wisdom and with guidance. And let them have people around them, surround them with people that will give them great insight into how to become better. Father, let them actively listen and let them never give up on trying to make themselves better and to push forward and rise up as a great leader. Keep them humble, but make them strong and courageous, Father, in your name. Amen. Thank you for listening to The Tongue with Dr. Mike this week, and I look forward to hearing from you all this week. God bless. I'll see you next time.